What do you see when I show you this list? How about this one? Well, you're probably thinking Bluehost is a lot higher up than Hostinger, so they must be better, right? And this couldn't be more wrong. Let me explain. I've been keeping up with web hosting for the past decade and I've noticed a trend. A lot of people creating a website for the first time choose Bluehost as their first provider. And that begs the question, why? Well, I did some research on this topic and let me tell you the information that I found out was kinda insane. When we're talking about websites, there are two main methods of creating said website, either using WordPress or coding it from scratch. And the problem a lot of people face is that coding is hard. It's like learning how to melt and forge steel when all you really want is a knife. So people choose to use WordPress, eliminate all of the manual work and use templates or visual design tools to create websites in minutes, not months. And Bluehost is officially recommended by WordPress themselves, so how can the not be the best choice? Well, look at the fine print. Yeah, Bluehost basically just bought this spot with some cold hard cash. It's not an official recommendation, it's a billboard. And to make this matter a lot worse, Bluehost is actually one of the worst performing hosting providers when it comes to hosting WordPress websites, as I'll show you from my performance tests in just a second. If we're just looking at raw speed, a Hostinger's 299 plan loads a WordPress website in 2.1 seconds. Bluehost 295 plan loads the same exact site in four seconds. That's twice as slow for pretty much the exact same site. Okay, so what the hell is going on? Why is there such a big difference in speed? Well, when you want to visit a website, a web server where it's hosted needs to do three things. One, acknowledge your request. Two, find the correct folder. And finally, flip to the correct files in the folder and show them to you. And this is where the differences come in. Hostinger is using Lightspeed technology for their servers, while Bluehost is using Apache. According to this data, it took 1.5 seconds for Bluehost servers to even respond and start loading the website, while Hostinger servers responded within 44 milliseconds. So if we would go back to the three steps that the web hosting server needs to do, Hostinger's servers are pretty much done by the time Bluehost's even start. And this slow time to first byte metric shows that the servers Bluehost is using are objectively outdated and slower. What's worse is that Bluehost is also lackluster in the storage department. When you have a website, all of the files, folders, images, and emails, they take up physical space on that server. Hostinger gives you 100 gigabytes to work with, while Bluehost only offers 10 gigabytes. But in reality, these gigabyte values mean very little. Because when you're hosting a website, you're not going to have just a few big files on your server. You're going to have tens of thousands of small files, and these are calculated differently. So in reality, file limits are much more important than storage limits, because you need to be able to host a lot of small files, not just a couple of big ones. Bluehost has a 200,000 file limit, also called an inode limit and Hostinger has a 400,000 file limit, which is again twice as much for pretty much the same price. Okay, so what happened? How can there be such a large performance difference for pretty much the same price? Well, according to my research, Bluehost pretty much stayed in 2017, while every other provider moved on. Their latest meaningful update was in 2017, Everything else after that was just wave after wave after wave of paid new features designed to squeeze you for money, but not give you better performance. On the other hand, Hostinger had four performance updates in March of 2023 alone. That's four times more updates in a month than Bluehost had in five years. And what's the cause of this? Well, in 2010, Bluehost was sold, and ever since that, it has been rapidly switching CEOs. It seems that absolutely every single new CEO is trying to fix the company. And in CEO terms, fixing equals making more money. We, we need more money. That money comes from you, the customer. But to keep the number going up constantly and shareholders happy, that money never gets reinvested back into their tech 
so they're effectively stuck in 2017 land. Okay, but everything I talked about so far revolves around the technical specification, and you might think, I don't care about any of that, I only care about one number, how much is it going to cost me? I'm not creating the next Facebook, I just need a simple website, and I need it for cheaps. And that's why people choose Bluehost, right? Sure, it might not be as fast, but it's the cheapest, right? Okay, let's take a look at the pricing models both of these companies use. And to make this comparison more fair, I'm not even going to use the cheapest hostinger plan, I'm going to use their middle plan, which is $2.99 a month, so you'd pay $36 for the first year, and then it renews at $8.99, so you'd pay $108 every year after that. However, if you do use the link in the description together with the code Emmet Reviews, you do get an exclusive 10% discount and 3 months of hosting for free, but to keep this comparison fair, I'm not gonna calculate this discount into the overall price because not everyone might use it. Bluehost comes in at $2.95 for the first year, so that's $35, followed by a $10.99 renewal, so you'd pay $132 every year after that. The average price for Hostinger, $6. Even without the discounts you can get from the description, the average price for Bluehost is $7. Okay, so at this point I've already determined that Bluehost is more expensive and slower, but how's the overall experience? Let's take a look at that. Creating a website is generally very easy with both providers. Bluehost uses cPanel, which is a really good industry standard control panel to manage stuff like automatic installations, email accounts, and technical settings. Hostinger has basically the exact same controls, just reskinned because they developed HPanel, which is still based on cPanel. I know, extremely original naming from their side, but in essence, it's the exact same tool with a slight difference in how it looks. Let's take a look at how both companies handle support requests, because in my opinion, both Hostinger and Bluehost don't really offer great support because they're cheap. And even though the average time you'll have to wait to get a response from Bluehost live chat is around 5 minutes and with Hostinger is around 10 minutes, there is a significant difference between the two that I feel is very, very important. Hostinger seems to have their support agents employed within the company, meaning they have a lot more power and can offer solutions on the spot. While Bluehost outsources this work to call centers in other countries, most likely India, I think. This creates a chain of command and inefficiency when communicating. The person you're chatting with actually doesn't have much control over your plan, or admin access, or even access to some sensitive files. And in most cases, he'll need to escalate the problem to their in-house team to actually provide a solution. So taking all of this into consideration, I cannot really recommend Bluehost in 2023. I used to recommend them in the past, I even used them in the past, and it's not like they got worse, everyone else just got better. At this point, they desperately need to upgrade their tech because each year they fall more and more behind. The reason why Bluehost is still recommended so often is that they pay quite a lot of money to promote them. For example, if you use the links in the description and purchase any plan, I get a kickback from that. That's how I monetize this channel because, yeah, I don't want to take sponsorship deals and YouTube ads pay, like, basically nothing. I personally don't really care if a provider pays me $50 or $70 per sale. I'm not min-maxing this to make as much money as possible, I generally make enough to sustain this as a full-time thing, so I focus on recommending products that I like to people that I think will enjoy using the products. But most companies that choose to create reviews are not individual creators. They're large advertising businesses and in large corporations the number must go up every single month, so they generally go with the highest paying options. Hence why you see a lot of Bluehost recommendations, even though these recommendations are not always earned. If you don't want to listen to my opinion because you think I'm biased towards certain providers, you're welcome to make your own conclusions. I've made a website called uptime.emitreviews.com where you'll find every single web hosting plan I currently have. And you'll be able to see how often it goes down and use the websites I've hosted on these plans to make your own independent speed tests and conclusions. Hope you enjoyed my Hostinger versus Bluehost comparison. 
even if it was so one-sided this year. But yeah, that's really not much to talk about when a web hosting provider hasn't issued an update in five years. If you want to grab a hostinger plan, I'd appreciate if you use the link in the description because as I mentioned, I do get a kickback and this is how I support the channel. You also get a discount for yourself. And if you don't really vibe with Hostinger or Bluehost, check out my list of top cheap web hosting providers right here. There are several options besides Hostinger that you can choose from and I'll see you in the next video.